so over the last year or so, I've since I've done my main video on my channel, my number one video, DIY How to Store Rice the Right Way, which has over 22,000 views, I've got a ton of comments and emails sent to me with a lot of different questions and everything else. Today's video, we're going to be answering a lot of those questions. Now, I went through, I picked out a lot of great questions that we can answer. A lot of them I did answer on the comments or the emails. And, but these here I'm going to take and personally answer right here. All right. Now I have been doing a lot of uh, investigating, a lot of research on rice and how to store it. And I found that maybe we don't have to do one of the steps. Maybe we can cut it out and save ourselves a little time. So welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And today we are going to be talking about DIY, how to prepare and store your rice long term. Okay, and hopefully answer a lot of your questions and everything else. Now, if you haven't seen that video, go into my playlist on my channel. It's right on the front page right there. The top five videos of my channel and the rice video is right there. It's number one. It has over 22,000 views, as I did say. And this way here you can see and I explain to you why I get into breaking up my rice in different sizes and everything else instead of putting it all into five pounds in a bucket. But you have to go in and watch that one because we're not covering that today. So go watch that video there. You'll enjoy it. So let's get going on this. The first thing I want to do is I want to read something to you real quick that I found on Utah State University. Okay, They have a, a whole research team on there on storing uh, food products and everything else. And rice was one of the main ones. So white rice, more commonly known as polished rice, is a main food source for over half of the world's population. Isn't it just like freaking amazing? I mean, that's mostly what most people eat in like third world countries and all over the world is rice. All right, rice is an excellent addition to home food storage because it's so versatile. I mean, come on, folks, this is face it. You're here to watch this video because rice is the number one thing you want to make sure that you have in your preps and that you can store. All right. That's why you're here. You're here to learn about doing these things and using rice because it's the most versatile product out there. You can use anything that you see behind me and put it in with rice. I mean, you can just get so creative with rice. It is just unbelievable. More creative than you can with pastas and anything else. Rice is the number one staple you want to be putting in your preps. All right. In addition, families should store about 300 pounds of rice for a year. Per person. All right. Depending on your personal preference, about 25 to 60 pounds of rice should be stored per person. All right. Now, this comes right from the Utah State University. I'll put a link to it right in the bottom. You guys can go through and read all, of, all the whole things. I'm just going to take out a couple little things real quick to try to keep this video as short as possible. Storage conditions. The best temperature to store your grains, your rice, and everything else is at 40 degrees. Now, most of us can't do that, all right? So if you had a root cellar, a basement, something like that, where you could store any of your dry goods and everything else, and you keep it at that 40-degree mark, that is just optional. I mean, that's just the, the cat's meow right there, folks. I mean, that's just what they're looking for, all right? But most of us can't do that, all right? <clears throat> so what do we do? As long as you can store it and keep it within 70 to 77 degrees in that general area, and you store stuff like in Mylar bags with an oxygen absorber, you're still going to get 30 years out of it, okay? And a BYU study sampled polished rice, okay, and parboiled rice stored from one year to 30 years, all right, and found that both types of rice will keep their nutritional value and their flavor for 30 years. There was no difference in the taste, and that came from the BYU study. So there you go. I mean, that's why everybody is here right now is because... You want to know about rice because rice, like I said, is the versatile product that you want to have in your preps. It's the number one thing you want to make sure that you have enough of, okay? Not only is it filling by itself, but like I said, you can add so much to it and make a nice meal. Now let's get to some of the questions and stuff that I have been receiving over the, the past year since I released that video and it got all the views and everything and which I thank everybody so much for. I thank everybody for everything that you've done for my channel. And, but let's get right to these questions. Can rice be stored in any type of container for a short or long term? All right. 
if you want to store it just in a container or something like it's got to be an airtight container you can get something like the lock and locks anything like that that's going to be airtight you want to make sure that's airtight and not just uh just some you know flimsy little container the leg keeps popping off or something like that you got to keep the air away from it and everything else all right how long will rice last in its original bag now in its original bag as you see right here okay I've got a 20 pound, a 5 pound, 2 pound, 1 pound. They didn't have a 10 pound. I couldn't get that for this video, folks. I'm sorry, but you know how things are. You know, there's no shortages. The shelves are just empty. So here we go. I mean, you know, I mean, if you store it just like this, and if you use your head here, folks, and you store it in a cool, dark place, all right, you're going to get three to five years out of this, no problem, just, just like this, all right, as long as there's no puncture holes or anything like that. So you have to inspect the bags and make sure that, you know, it's still airtight from when you bought it, all right? Now, when you buy your rice at the stores and stuff, always check your bags and stuff. Turn them, you know, move them around and make sure nothing's falling out. If something's falling out, throw it back on the shelf. Don't take that one. Pick another one, all right? Because you don't know how long that sucker's been packaged, and you don't know how long it's had that hole, and you don't know what has maybe crawled in there ever since then. So don't ever buy anything that is open. You might even think it's open or anything else. Put it down, pick something else up. All right. How long will rice last in a vacuum sealed bag without a oxygen absorber? All right. We have two vacuum sealed bags here. One with an oxygen absorber, one without an oxygen absorber. Okay. Now, as I was saying, if you can store these things in a cool, dry place, and it's dark because, unfortunately, your vacuum seal bags, well, they don't keep out the light folks and light is a, another one of those things that can destroy food over a long period of time so if you can store these in a cool dry dark place then you know especially if you can keep the temperatures as cool as possible you know you get down around that 40 45 degree range and everything else you know this one without the oxygen absorber probably would last you know, 30 years. But let's be realistic here, all right? Most of us maybe don't have basements. We don't have a root cellar. We don't have anything like that. We're going to be storing it at room temperature, you know, hopefully in a cool, the coolest place we can, the darkest place we can, and the driest place we can. So just like this, more than likely, if you just vacuum sealed it without an oxygen absorber in it, you know, you're going to get about 20 years. So you're going to lose about 10 years because if you have an oxygen absorber in there and you store it in a cool, dry, dark place, you know, you're going to get about 30 years. So it's all in what you can do. I mean, 20 years is still better than nothing, right? <clears throat> Next. So storing my rice for long term is best in Mylar bags with oxygen absorbers. Yes. And here's why. The Mylar bags block out all the light, right? No light. Okay. There's no light that can get through there and gives you, in my opinion, okay, the safest and the longest shelf life of 30 plus years, storing it in a mile hour bag with an oxygen absorber. Now, also remember your oxygen absorbers, you know, I mean, they're taking out the air and everything else. So if you're doing it properly and you're packing these things, you're sealing them. Now, you can't get the mile hour bags to have the zip. You know, they're, they're like a Ziploc almost, you know, you can put them in on it, but you still have to seal it with the Mylar bag. The little lip that's still at the top, you want to make sure that you seal that with your iron. You don't have to have the Mylar bag sealer. Just use an iron and seal that off because then there's no chance of any air getting into the bag whatsoever, period. All right. Now you just want to make sure that you're storing these things and you're going to get 30 years or more depending on how you can store it and everything else. Can I store my rice in a two liter plastic bottle, like a soda bottle or something? Yes, you can. First, you have to make sure that you wash out that bottle. Then you have to make sure that it is very, very dry. So, you know, those are the two key components. Now, you have to get yourself a funnel and you have to take and then pour your rice from your bag into your uh, two liter bottle and put the lid on it and then you can store it away. Here's the problem, all right? You're gonna get the same amount of time if you just store it in here or if you store it in a two liter bottle. Doesn't really matter, folks. So 
however you want to do it. If you want to, if you feel safer putting it in a two liter bottle, um, there are a lot of videos out there to show you how to do that and everything else. Um, I particularly don't do it because it's, in my opinion, it's just a waste of time. You get three to five years if you leave it in this bag. You get three to five years if you just if you put it into a two liter plastic bottle. Why bother? I, I'm just being honest with you. I mean, this is just my opinion, folks. If you feel comfortable it, that you know you think it's better off, then by all means go right ahead and do it. But you're just wasting your time, and then you can't use a two-liter bottle for your long-term storage. That'd be good for short-term storage, three to five years. So let's move on down the line. All right. Now I really want to get to. This next question <clears throat> was quite interesting. Oxygen absorbers. You mean moisture absorbers. No, I do not. I mean oxygen absorbers. All right. And here's why. Oxygen absorbers only absorb oxygen and not moisture from the air. I mean, they're only going to pull out the oxygen. They're not going to take out the moisture. But the silica gel, okay, that you would buy, which is a moisture, um, it absorbs all the moisture in your bag. Therefore, to maintain the humidity level in the packaging, it is recommended that you use only oxygen absorbers when doing your long-term food storage. Okay? It will ensure your extended freshness with the right packaging, which the right packaging would be your Marlar bags right there that's your your right package I have nothing wrong with doing your um, vacuum seal bags and stuff you just have to make sure like I said is you can store those in a dark place because you don't want light getting to it um, to go along with that can you use the silica gels and oxygen absorbers together this was another question no you cannot Okay, this is because the oxygen absorbers, um, they need moisture in order to remove the oxygen. Okay, it's kind of like a reverse effect. Uh, since the, the silica gels, the, you know, they remove all the moisture out of the, your products, whatever it is you want to put in there, rice, beans, whatever it may be. All right, since they're taking the moisture out of the packaging, it nullifies the activation process of the whole um, oxygen absorber. It just makes it so it doesn't work. So it's just a waste of money. And they are so expensive, you don't want to be wasting them. So no, you cannot use both together in any type of situations. All right, that's just a no-no. You want to stay away from the moisture ones. Just use that as a oxygen absorber, putting it in, into your... Uh, Mylar bags, your vacuum sealed bags, those type of things. Is oxygen absorbers only, no moisture absorbers. Now, if you did, here's something that you can do, folks. Now pay attention. If you do your vacuum sealed bags, your Mylar bags, and everything else, if you wanted to, if you wanted to, as you're loading these into your five-gallon buckets, you could put a silica um, absorber, in say the bucket and then put these in here then seal these on here and any moisture or anything that could be in there um, it's not going to affect your product because your product is already sealed but say inside the bucket if you really wanted to go that far I would not recommend it my opinion you don't even need them but I'm sure somebody will ask this question Yes, you could put that inside of the bucket and then load up your food that's already been vacuum sealed and Mylar bagged and put it into your bucket if it makes you feel all comfy. But in my opinion, you don't need it. All right. Now, let's talk about something about some research and stuff I've been doing over the last month on rice. Okay. I've been running across a lot of different things and a lot of different people talking about between freezing and not freezing. Now, for years, I have been freezing my rice. Now, since I've started 
uh, really seriously prepping and everything else. I started off by freezing my rice because that's how everybody was saying to do it. I was doing that. I mean, to making room, taking stuff, moving it from one freezer to another. You know, you're trying to slam 20 bags, 20 pounds into the, you know, I mean, it's just a pain in the neck. So what I have found is, is you don't really need to do that. All right. For number one, you have to make sure if you're going to do like this big, huge 20 pound bag of rice, you know, there's all different times and everything else. So if you're doing a one pound bag of rice, all right, that, that's going to be in there for 24 hours. You know, you're going to be anywhere between 24 and 72 hours. Reason being is this big bag of 20 pounds of rice, you know, it's going to take longer for it to freeze all the way through. It's going to take longer for it to thaw also and to dry out. Now, drying out is the biggest thing that you really want to, you, you know, you really have to pay attention to. And we're going to get to that in just a second. The freezing process is to kill off all the bugs and the weasels and the eggs and all this other kind of crap that's, that's already in the rice. All right. It's there. Now, we've all survived by buying a bag of rice, come home, open it. All right. There's already stuff that could be in here. It's already there. You make the rice, you serve dinner, everybody has survived for hundreds of thousands of years. My point being is, okay, to alleviate the problem of making sure that the biggest problem in freezing isn't the freezing. The biggest problem is making sure it's dry and the moisture is completely gone out of the product before you put it away in your Mylar bags or your vacuum sealed bags. Now, if you did something like this, 20 pounds of rice or something, yeah, you could get out. If you've got a whole ton of freaking cookie sheets, you know, I mean, maybe you're a big cooker or something. You've got like 12, 15 of them laying around the house somewhere. You could spread it out the rice over the cookie sheets and then, you know, kind of stack them, you know, crisscross. Stack them up and let them dry. This way here, you get a good dry layer and everything else. If you're going to leave it in this bag, it's going to have to set out for a very long time. And then you don't even know in the middle if it is actually dry. It may feel dry, but is it actually dry? There's no moisture because once you pack that away and if there's still moisture in there and you put that bad boy into your Mylar bag that you just spent a lot of money on. All right. And you all saw the video I did on Monday about Mylar bags and how much money you spent for the oxygen absorbers and the time to do it. Um, down the road, you go to open this bag and if there was still moisture in here, folks, guess what? It's going to be nothing but mold. You ain't going to be able to eat it. Forget about if there's bugs or anything. It's going to have mold and stuff in it and it's useless. You don't want to get botulism. You don't even want to take those chances with this kind of stuff. When you're doing your food preps. You have to make sure that you're following a good rule of thumb, folks, and trying to make sure that you're being safe. So, we alleviate out the freezing part. Just alleviate it out. Here's why. Once you pack your rice, you take your rice from here, goes right into here. All right? You just save yourself a whole shit ton of time. All right? Now, you put your oxygen absorbers in. Use your iron. As you can see, this one here is sealed up. I've got a good almost two-inch seal on this bad boy. All right? Seal that sucker right up. Within two weeks, it's going to make, it's going to draw down all the oxygen that it needs to draw out of this bag. Now, the bag may still look like it has oxygen in it when it really doesn't. Because the oxygen absorbers, depending on what size you use, pull out up to like 28% of the oxygen and leave 72% of the nitrogen. Follow me here, folks. So the nitrogen is inside. It's pulled out the oxygen and things can't live, survive, or anything without oxygen, right? Spaceman blast off goes up into space. If he walks outside without a space suit on, what happens? He's dead. He has to have that space suit on because it's filled with oxygen so that he can breathe. Same scenario as your Mylar bag with your oxygen absorbers. Sucks the air out, kills off everything in there within two weeks, Whatever was in there is dead and gone. So you don't have to worry about it anymore, folks. All right. So my suggestion is um, you're, you're fine and dandy. I'm not going to be freezing my rice anymore. I'm not going through that whole hassle of taking a risk and finding room 
and making sure it's dry and is it dry and all this I'm not even doing it anymore I'm only taking I'm buying it bagging it I'm done move on to the next project and my prepping you see you got to make sure that you're using your time wisely folks so if you did use a five gallon bucket here you put the five gallon bag um, that is the uh, what is it the 18 by 24 bag that I showed in my mylar bag video I just did the other day you put that in here you fill it up with rice you know you want at least 2,000 cc's of oxygen absorbers in there now me personally I throw an extra one in if you're buying the 2,000 ones all right I throw an extra one in ain't gonna hurt if I'm storing my rice that way then you know what here we go it's gonna be good seal it up put the lid on mark it put it away you're done all right <clears throat> so in closing in my own opinion um, I would recommend that if you're going to be doing your food storage and you're going to be storing rice beans anything spend the money and buy mylar bags with auction resort if you want to skimp a little bit, but still get the same security feeling that you have the products and you want to maybe put them into your buckets so you can keep them in a cool, dry, dark place, go with vacuum sealing. Only if you really can do that because, you know, you put the oxygen absorber like in this one, all right, I'm going to get 30 years out of this bad boy. I'm going to get 20 years out of the one without. So it's better than nothing, folks. In the prepping world, something is always better than nothing. And just remember, rice is your number one food group to go to. It's your friend. It's your best friend. It's your drinking buddy. It's your whatever you want to call it. Rice is what's going to save the day in the end. Because you can use rice, like I said, and use any of these products to go along with whatever it is you want to do. So I am Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And I thank you for watching this video. And if you do want more information, you can always comment below. If you have a question, if you don't feel like commenting below because you don't want to put it out there and you'd rather keep everything private or anything, or you have a private question or something like that, email me, survivalpreparedness69 at gmail.com. And I'll do my best to get back to you. I usually answer all that kind of stuff on the weekends because of my work schedule. But once again, this is DIY how to prepare and store your rice for long term. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Hope you all go back and watch the other one. If you haven't seen the first video, it's right on my homepage. It's right there for your enjoyment. Got it all set up for you. Really nice and pretty. Well, as pretty as I can get it. So, you all have a great day. Stay safe. Keep prepping. Thrive to survive. And until next time, folks, I'll catch you all on the flip side.